Howdy, welcome to the garage today. I'm Luke, Thunderhead 2D9 at YouTube. That over there is Chug the dog and I've already bored her to death, I can see. But um, anyway, today I just wanna make a very quick video and go through one of my biggest fears that actually I finally encountered with the mechanical fuel pump, that being the possibility of um, when the, they fail, you put fuel in your engine's oil. And if you don't catch it soon enough, you can completely ruin an engine. So I've never been sure if this is like lore or not. I've actually never had a mechanical fuel pump fail on a vehicle that I regularly drive to be able to see if this is true or not. And in this video, we'll take a look at, you know, factually if this is a thing or not to worry about. So a little bit of backstory. About three weeks ago, I pulled our old 76 F-250 off of my father's tree farm. I had parked it there two or three years ago where it sat. And I've always had an internal rule that says, you know, if something sits for a long time or you don't know the condition of the fuel pump because of this fear, just go ahead and change it. They're super cheap, 16 bucks. These old mechanical fuel pumps are really easy to do. Right off the side of the engine block, there's really no good reason not to. But I didn't get to it in time. And then I actually changed the engine oil and then um, I pulled in to the garage for something else. And I had thought, you know, previously, man, it kind of smells like fuel around the engine bay. And then, so when I pulled it in here that day and I was like, man, I'm just gonna run it and see if it's leaking anywhere. And it started spraying fuel everywhere on the underside of the vehicle, which luckily I didn't burn the thing down because it was hitting the exhaust on the engine. So <laughs> that would have been just tremendous. And basically um, what had happened, you know, since it had sat, the diaphragm petrified and then it eventually cracked and then fuel was able to get past the diaphragm and, you know, do some, some potentially pretty bad things. So I can confirm that if your diaphragm fails, you will get fuel in your oil. So one of the notable things is that my oil pressure dropped about five PSI hot idle because it was getting thinned down from the gasoline that was in it. Now where it was actually spraying fuel out of is it has this little vacuum discharge chamber so that when the diaphragm is doing its job, it has to displace air somewhere and doesn't need to pump air into the engine per se. So um, normally nothing would come out of here, but in this case with fuel, you know, getting past this diaphragm, a lot of it was coming out this direction, which is good because we wouldn't want it to go into our engine. So it's actually really cool how these mechanical fuel pumps work. Um, basically you have this diaphragm here, which is retained in this uh, mechanical fuel pump body, which is mounted to the block. Now, as you see here, the spring actually has a little retainer ring here, which goes up and meets in this stepped part of the housing. Now, when the lever moves up, it's contacted by the mechanical fuel pump eccentric. It's gonna push it down, which is going to pull this whole assembly up. Now, remember, the spring is contained within this area. So when it goes up, the spring actually compresses and you just would see this rod exposed, kind of like this. And so then um, that creates a low pressure area which draws fuel from the gas tank into the body of the mechanical fuel pump. There's a one-way check valve so it can go in, but it can't go out from this point. Now, uh, mechanically, again, it draws fuel in, but what controls moving the fuel into your carburetor is actually this spring itself. It is both what pushes your fuel towards your carburetor and your regulator. So say this is like an eight PSI spring when that lever comes up. Um, if you have eight PSI on the line, this diaphragm will just not retract. And so basically that spring would stay compressed and this lever would go up and down on that shaft. Now, when you step on the throttle, you're gonna use some fuel, your needle and seats are gonna open. And then when you're moving fuel again, that spring will you know, fully uh, expand and, and do whatever and push fuel out of your other side. Remember, this is a one-way check valve. So when that diaphragm goes down, this is on the discharge side. It's also a one-way check valve. So fuel will then go out. So you can kind of see how it's regulated there. Um, pretty slick. 
There's some other parts and pieces here that are really just anti-float stuff for the lever. So the lever makes sure that it rides on the cam lobe at all times, because if that starts slapping away, that's bad news. But, um, you know, kind of interesting. Now, looking at the actual housing itself, it has to, when it contracts, it has to, again, displace that air somewhere. So it has this little orifice for air to be displaced out of, or else it would be pumping air into the engine, or if it was sealed, you know, it has to, when this diaphragm goes in, it has to have an area for it to go in at. So it pushes air out of this little orifice here. Now, when this diaphragm was ruptured, again, I had fuel spraying out of this guy. So, you know, not good. And I noticed my oil pressure overall had dropped. So that was also fairly unsavory. I'm like, oh no, you know, and I just changed oil on the thing too. So it was like, I just had to throw $30 in the garbage. Um, we had a 200 mile trip we had to make the next day. So I, I just went ahead and changed the oil. But if you hook this guy on here, like how it's designed to be, there is nothing that stops fuel from being on this side, going up through the body of this guy and then going into your engine. I tested this out. I poured water into the body of this with this assembly attached inside like it's supposed to be and water ran out on my um, the oiling side, the engine side of my fuel pump. So that wasn't good. Um, just something to watch out there. I guess the big takeaway for me, for you guys here, is if you have a vehicle that sits for a long time, you know, watch out for this stuff. And in a lot of cases, I've moved to electric fuel pumps, mechanical fuel pumps being right on the engine block get hot in idle scenarios. You know, they promote vapor lock on modern day fuels. They were great in the day, but fuel's different today and it doesn't handle that quite as well as it used to. Um, you know, when they fail, they're putting oil or gasoline in your oil, just not good. So it's nice to have a timing cover with a provision for this stuff and having the mechanical fuel pump eccentric installed, but anymore I try and block these off and then just run a good quality electric fuel pump, which the one I've run for miles and miles, I'll link below. It's a really solid unit and I would recommend, you know, giving it a look. Um, but uh, anyway, not good stuff. You can see how you can quickly ruin an engine because gasoline doesn't lubricate anything. And once your engine wears, it's worn and it's game over. So that's my little story there with my mechanical fuel pump. Hope you enjoyed and uh, learned something and I'll catch you guys next time.